Hello guys, welcome back to another video and today we'll be working question 8 from the January 2021 Mathematics Paper 2. So let's go. So question 8 says the straight line graph of x is equal to 5 minus 3y intersects the x-axis at p and the y-axis at q and it says determine the coordinates of p and q. So what we know is that, that on the x-axis where the straight line would intersect um, and form P, we know that at the point when the x-axis is intersected, y is equal to zero. So all along that line, y is equal to zero. So therefore, x being equal to five minus three y will now substitute y for zero. As we stated at this point, y is always equal to zero whenever the x-axis is being intersected. So therefore, it will be x is equal to five minus three multiply by zero and we go ahead and solve for x so we'll have x is equal to five minus zero as three multiplied by zero is zero and we now know that five minus zero will leave us with five so therefore x is equal to five so at the point the point p where the straight line x is equal to five minus three y intersects the x axis it is equal to the x value is five and the y value is zero and what we know is that at the y-axis at the point when it is intersected x is equal to zero so therefore using the same straight line formula x is equal to five minus three y whenever the y-axis is intersected all along this line x is equal to zero so what we'll have is carrying over the three y to the left hand side and the x to the right hand side we'll have three y is equal to five three y is equal to 5 minus x we know that x is 0 so what we'll have is 3y is equal to 5 minus 0 where y is equal to 5 divided by 3 so it would have been 3y is equal to 5 and then we're dividing both sides of the equation by 3 to get rid of the 3 on the left hand side so therefore what we'll have is y is equal to 5 over 3 so therefore, our coordinates for P, it would be 5, 0, and for Q, it would be 0 and 5 over 3, respectively. Part 2 now says calculate the length of PQ giving your answers to two decimal places. So we have our coordinates of P being 5, 0 and the Q being 0, 5 over 3. What we know is that this is our x1, y1 value and this is our x2, y2 value. So therefore to calculate the length of the line, the formula for length of line is equal to the square root of x minus of x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square. So in replacing these values, I said this was our x2 y2 value. So this is zero and our five over three and our x1 y1 so minus five and then a minus zero and each bracket is squared. So what we'll have is working out our bracket, zero minus five will leave us with a negative five square and a five over three minus zero will leave us with a five over three square. So now working out our bracket to square each term, what we'll have is negative five square will give us 25, a positive 25 and a five over three square will leave us with 25 over nine. We can go ahead now and work out this addition fraction that is here. So it is 25 over 1 plus 25 over 9. And what we'll have is 1 into the LCM, which is 9. So 1 into 9 goes 9 times 9 times 25 to give us 225. And 9 into itself goes 1 times 1 times 25 will give us 25. So what we'll have is 225 plus 25 divided by 9. And that will give us 250 divided by 9. And we need to find the square root of this. And what we'll have is the length of the line PQ is equal to 5.27. And this was written to two decimal places as the question 
requested. Part 3 now says R is the midpoint of the line PQ. Determine the coordinates of R, the midpoint. So again, we have our coordinates, which was 5, 0, and Q, which is 0, and 5 over 3. So what we know is that the midpoint, the formula for midpoint is x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and the other coordinate would have been y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So that would have been 5, or x1, plus 0, or x2 divided by 2, and 0, which is our y1, plus 5 over 3, or y2, divided by 2. And what we'll get is 5 over 2, so 5 plus 0 will leave us with 5, so 5 over 2 plus 0 plus 5 over 3 is 5 over 3 over 2. And therefore, midpoint 5 divided by 2 will leave us with 2.5, and 5 over 3 divided by 2 will leave us with 0 0.83, which should have been the same as 5 over 6. B now says the functions f and g are defined as follows. f of x is equal to 5 minus x and the g of x is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 1. And it says the graphs of f of x and g of x meet at a point m and n. Determine the coordinates of the point m and n. So what we're doing is that from f of x, we know that f of x is the same as y. So we're letting y be equal to 5 minus x for equation 1 and for equation 2 we'll have y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 1 which is from the g of x we can now solve these equations using simultaneous equations so we're substituting equation 1 into equation 2 so wherever we see y in equation 2 we're going to substitute it for 5 minus x from equation 1 so what we'll have is 5 minus x, which is replacing the y in equation 2, is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 1. And we can now go ahead and solve for our corresponding x values. So what we know is that 0 is equal to, so we brought over the 5, it was a positive 5 years, and it comes across the equal sign, it becomes a negative 5, and our x was negative years, so when it comes across, it becomes positive. So what we have is x squared minus 2x plus x minus 5 minus 1. Now we can work out this portion of minus 2x plus x and minus 5 minus 6. And what we'll get is 0 is equal to x squared and minus 2x plus x will leave us with a minus x. And minus 5 minus 6 will leave us with a minus 5 minus 1 will leave us with a minus 6. Looking at this now, this is quadratic, so therefore we can go ahead and solve this using quadratics. So we're factorizing using quadratics. So we're looking for two numbers that when they multiply together will give us negative 6, but at the same time when we add those two numbers, it will give us a negative 1 to replace the middle term here, so B term negative 1. So the two numbers that we're using is a negative 3 and a positive 2. As when we multiply negative 3 by 2, we will indeed get a negative 6. And when we do negative 3 plus 2, we'll indeed get a negative 1. So now we can go ahead and factorize by grouping. So 0, therefore, is equal to from x squared minus 3x. What is common in these two first terms is x. So we say x into x squared will leave us with x and x into a minus 3x will leave us with a minus 3. Our second common factor is 2. So we're going to say 2 into 2x will leave us with x, and 2 into a negative 6 will leave us with a negative 3. And we factorize again here, or as I usually say, what is on the outside are common factors. We put in one bracket, and what is in brackets by themselves, we put them in another one. So therefore, 0 is equal to x plus 2, in one bracket and x minus 3 in another bracket. We can now go ahead and determine the two values for x. So therefore, 
x is equal to 0 is equal to x plus 2 or x is equal to x minus 3 which is from our two brackets so therefore 0 being equal to x plus 2 we can solve for x and therefore x is equal to a negative 2 as the 2 was added in here so when it goes across the equal sign it will become negative or 0 is equal to x minus 3 so therefore what we know is that x is equal to a positive 3 this 3 was negative here so when it comes across the equal sign it will become positive so now we can determine the coordinates of points m and n so when x is equal to 2 now using our equation 1 we can now substitute the value for x when x is equal to 2 y is equal to 5 minus x which is y is equal to 5 minus negative 2 So therefore, what we'll have is y is equal to 7, so it is 5 minus, so this should be when x is equal to negative 2, and that's the negative 2 from there. So what we'll have is when x is equal to a negative 2, y is equal to 5 minus x, so y is equal to 5 minus negative 2, and therefore y is equal to a positive 7, and this becomes 5 plus 2. The other part then will be when x is equal to 3. So when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 5 minus x, which is our same equation 1. Now substituting for x, y is equal to 5 minus 3, and therefore y is equal to 2. So our possible coordinates is where m is equal to a negative 2 and a 7, and n is equal to 3. So when x was equal to negative 2, y is equal to 7. And when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 2. And that is our answer. Part C now says Monty is cycling at 12 meters per second. After 4.5 seconds, he starts to decelerate. And after a further 2.5 seconds, he stops. The speed time graph is shown below and part one says calculate the constant deceleration. To calculate the constant deceleration, the gradient of this line will give the acceleration. So therefore what we'll have is remember the gradient of the line is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So y2 would have been 12 and x2 would have been 4.5 and y1 is 0 and x1 is 7. So that is how we get our numbers in our formula here. So therefore 12 minus 0 is 0 and 4.5 minus 7 is negative 2.5 and therefore when you do 12 divided by negative 2.5 you'll get a negative 4.8 meters per second square. This represents our acceleration and therefore our deceleration will be just multiplying it by a negative one and we'll get a 4.8 meters per second square. And that is the constant deceleration, 4.8 meters per second square. Part two now says to calculate Monty's speed over the seven seconds. So therefore, to calculate the average speed, we'll first need to calculate the area under the distance time graph, which is the distance that is covered by Monty. Looking at this, this is the area of a trapezium, and we know that the area of our trapezium is half AB multiplied by H where A and B are the parallel sides. So therefore, A in this case would be the top line we're using as 4.5 and B, the bottom line would be seven. So therefore to be half multiply by 4.5 plus seven multiply by 12. 4.5 plus seven will give us 11.5. So it is a half multiply by 11.5 multiply by 12. Then when we do that, when we put that in our calculator, we'll get the area to be 69 meters. So now to calculate the average speed, average speed is equal to total distance covered over the total time 
taken, the total distance covered, which we just calculated, is 69 meters. And the total time taken, which is on the graph, is 7 seconds. And therefore, the average speed is 9.86 meters per second. And this is written to two decimal places. And that is the end of our question and we'll definitely see you for question nine.